Let's look at this from The Guardian. Now, toxic work environments, does that sound familiar, Nick? It does, sadly, Andrew, and I've sent an email to HR about you, but extreme suffering central to culture of elite kitchens. And, of course, my dad is a chef, and, and his kitchen was very small and very nice and everything, but some of these big kitchens are absolutely mental. And, and what people are doing, certain uh, chefs, they're putting their hands into, like, boiling breadcrumbs, and you put them in there as long as you can. And then Why? To prove your manliness as a chef. See, my, even my dad had a sort of pride about the fact that he could take... Burn, he would, like, glibly put his hand on hot things as a sort of ma Did match he? show display. Yeah, because he was really? a chef. Because I read a... this and just thought, this sounds absolutely No, mad. no, there's a pride among chefs about being able to take really, like, burns on your hands. And, stuff. and one of them even cauterised his wound on the, on the yeah, stove or something. lovely. And this is normal in kitchens, and this is all good. Uh, but they're trying to, of course, now get rid of it, Andrew. PC gone mad. They're trying to get rid of it, and they're saying, oh, there needs to be diversity in the kitchen and less playground bullying. What's the point of a kitchen if you can't be burning yourself and having playground bullying? Do you think, Cressida, there is too much toxic masculinity in kitchens? No, I think if you stop all the masculinity, it will pop up somewhere. This and is... do you think the food is, needs the toxic masculinity? Maybe they, oh, that's what no. creates the, 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 the food. I don't know about that, but I've, I had some studenty jobs in kitchens. Um, yes. I remember the atmosphere. It was quite scary. I remember being a waitress and having to go in once and ask this chef, uh, this guy from Northern Ireland, if somebody could have extra cheese or something. And he's like, get out of my kitchen, Chris! And I, I remember that atmosphere. But that, that is the thing. I mean, I, I, similarly, I was a waiter. I remember dropping a whole plate of sandwiches for the buffet and it's because I was so terrified of the chefs and the way that they scream the at you I just picked them up and served them well, apparently there's links not with the forces the, the, the person that came up with the current way kitchens are run was in, was in the army or something and it did make me think of I don't know if you guys know Sebastian Junger he was the director of Restrepo yes which is this film about uh, war and, and he's I've seen a TED talk of his where he talks about veterans missing war and I think men have just got this capacity, haven't they? They need, maybe not all of them, guys, I don't know, but they need some kind of... They need, they need aggression. That's why they go on stag do's Nick, and rugby clubs and all that madness. Could it be, could it be that because, you know, traditionally um, people have said the women's place is in the kitchen, <laughs> that men who are in the kitchen for a living, they have to prove their masculinity to the nth degree to kind of shed that kind of stigma. No, it's not that. But <laughs> the thing is, Andy, when you drop your sandwich, it, it's a trial you have to overcome. As it says here, one chef told researchers he, he was promoted because he'd cope with a boss holding a knife to his throat and screaming, I'm going to bleep and kill you. And once you've overcome that, you become a man and a chef. But it doesn't make, mean you can make good fish fingers, does it? It, it does. Because no, you've got the passion. I don't it's just ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, don't hold knives to people's necks. That's outrageous.